Hey, so Kate Hartley here and today I'm going to be talking about the foods that we can be eating or should be eating more of when we're going through either the perimenopause or the menopause and also things that you should be ideally trying to avoid. Now, um, it's amazing how much of our menopausal symptoms can be alleviated or indeed made worse by what we're eating and drinking. So I'm just gonna go, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. I'm not gonna to get too scientific and just go over the main food groups that you should be considering adding to your diet if you're not already doing it and also give you a brief explanation as to why. So first and foremost, it's vegetables. Cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables like uh, kale, Okra is really good, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, that sort of thing. They are going to be high in the sort of the essential vitamins and minerals that you need, high in fiber, which is really important to try and keep things moving when we're going through the menopause. A lot of people uh, suffer with constipation. And, you know, when you're starting to get bunged up, it sort of helps just to hang on to all the sort of stuff that we don't want to be hanging on to. So you want to be adding um, things like that into your diet. Um, avocados are incredibly beneficial for us on several different levels. They've got really healthy fats in them. They're very high in protein. Um, sorry, quite high in protein, but they're very high in fiber. I think in a cup off the top of my head, it's like 13 grams of fiber, which is awesome. And about three grams of um, healthy fat, uh, sorry, lean protein. So um, an avocado ideally want to be trying to eat half an avocado a day um that they contain so many really good things for us which is going to bring me briefly on to boron boron is a trace mineral and it's incredibly important for they even have associated boron with um helping to start life on earth but as far as our menopause goes it helps us um, assimilate or sort of transport hormones around the body better. It helps with bone health. It helps with mental health. It's been um, recorded to help reduce certain cancers. And obviously, when we go through menopause, there's a chance that we have a slightly higher risk of developing certain cancers. So boron's a really good trace mineral that we should all be trying to eat more of. Boron's high in dried fruit. So things like uh, raisins are incredibly high. Uh, prunes, um, oh, there was another one, dried peaches, um, are really, really good. I, every day I have like three or four prunes in the afternoon. It's part of my sort of healthy eating plan. Um, and I mean, partly because they do help sort of regulate your blood sugars, they're very high in fiber, but they also contain boron. Uh, boron is, I mean, if you actually Google boron, it has it's literally a multitude of things that are beneficial for us. So, you know, just try and eat a few more dried fruits possibly into your diet or just go large on Christmas pudding when Christmas Day rolls by. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention on that is our gut health. Gut health is incredibly important, particularly when we're going through the menopause. I think a lot of us struggle with anxiety. We feel really ratty and um, having a healthy gut is incredibly beneficial for our mental health. Um, it's been proven that about 90% of our serotonin of, and 50% of our dopamine, two of our feel-good hormones, are created in the gut, not in the brain like was originally thought. So when we've got good gut health, you're going to be creating sufficient happy hormones. When your gut health is off, you're really gonna be shooting yourself in the foot. So things that negatively affect our gut health are things like, I mean, the obvious things. So alcohol, refined sugars, too many processed carbs. So white pasta, white rice, lots of potato, uh, white bread, that kind of stuff, you know, donuts, all, all the sort of packaged white stuff that you can buy. Try and cut that, that down significantly when you're going through the menopause. Um, things that you can eat to help promote gut health are um, live yogurts. Make sure they've got the um, a live bacteria that actually gets through the gut. A lot of them don't. Uh, you'll pay a fortune for some potential probiotics and they don't survive the trip. Bacillus coagulans does. It's a soil based um, probiotic. So that is one that will help you. So just check to make sure a lot of the live yogurts out there do have that, but Bacillus coagulans is the one you want to be looking for or one of the ones that will get through the gut and help you with your gut health. Um, again, green leafy vegetables help promote healthy guts, uh, reducing sugar, like I just mentioned. Um, also things like there's people have sort of said, oh, you know, you shouldn't eat soya because of the fact it's a phytoestrogen. 
and I've actually done quite a bit of research into this and the latest articles and you know the really sort of bona fide PubMed articles uh, are saying that they actually they it's not a nest it's not something you should be re restricting I'm not going to go against what your doctor has advised you but um, by doing some of my own research in the background I do uh, drink soy milk and for the reason that it does help boost your estrogen levels um, I find for me it works really really well if you've had breast cancer or something like that then I would certainly advise talking to your general practitioner about it but do some research you know I think well I know um, GPs don't have an awful lot of um, uh, information you know they don't get a lot of training on nutrition and you know there's always that tendency to want to medicate as opposed to treat more holistically um, I would I would do a bit of googling if I were you if if you're worried about things like soya in your and uh, you know isoflavoins phytoestrogens in your diet I do take them and I think they work things like soy, uh, soy sauce um miso things like that contain a reasonable amount of uh, phytoestrogens a lot of plants naturally have them in them so um you know consider that if if you're getting a lot of hot flashes if you're anxious um you know just if sort of general menopausal health um zinc is another thing that's really really important if you find that your libido has gone right down it could be that you need more zinc zinc helps promote uh, testosterone and when we're going through the menopause, it affects all of our hormones. They all start to fluctuate. Uh, but if you find that you're really struggling with the low libido, uh, it might be that you need to increase your zinc intake. Again, that's lots of leafy, fresh vegetables. So, you know, if to be quite honest, none of this is rocket science. I think the boron thing is really quite interesting. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's just healthy eating. It's clean-ish eating and cutting out the refined stuff, which is going to support your trip through the menopause. One last thing I want to add is adrenal health is incredibly important. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I bang on all the time about supporting our adrenal glands because the um, adrenals actually back up the job of the ovaries as we go through menopause. So the adrenals actually help to create estrogen as our estrogen levels drop off because the ovaries aren't making so much and with sort of the way we live these days our, our stress levels are pretty much high and given a year like we've just had and the run up to Christmas I should think most people's stress levels are just through the roof um, when your adrenal glands are constantly tired and fatigued because of these high levels of stress that we're all under so much of the time um, it does have a knock-on effect as to how our body then balances or tries to balance out that those declining levels of estrogen. So if you can support your adrenal health by doing things like meditation, walking outside, getting vitamin D, vitamin D, as well as really good for our bone health, which is why you should be eating leafy green vegetables as well for the calcium. And of course dairy but i know some people can't drink dairy dairy is also more acidic on the body whereas vegetables are much more alkaline so it sets up a more preferred chain reaction in the body if you if you can get your um, calcium from green leafy vegetables but vitamin d is incredibly important for our mental health and supporting our systems and processes on the whole yeah heart health brain health bone health skin health blood health i mean it's, it's just one of those things a bit like boron it's incredibly impactful on our body as a whole um, but for menopause um, you know when we're trying often we struggle with our sleep uh, because of hot flashes and anxiety we just feel sort of out of sorts vitamin d will also help us sleep better because it helps us create serotonin which helps us create melatonin which is our sleepy hormone so um, you know it is about living a healthy-ish balanced life but again supporting the amount of stress that you you're coming under and that stress can be nutritional stress it can be lack of sleep stress it can be being too thirsty stress make sure you're drinking lots of water if you struggle to drink enough water throughout the day what I advise all of the ladies in my boot camp when they join, if they struggle with water, is habit stack. So each time you go to the toilet for a pee, come out and have a half glass of water, or a, sorry, a glass of water. So you're associating something that you have to do with something that you struggle to do. 
And that's how you can build healthy habits really simply. And of course, going to the toilet and then having a glass of water is a really sort of logical one to follow. So I hope that's helped. Um, I mean, essentially, it is just pretty much healthy eating and making sure that you've got a full balance of good fiber, lean protein, healthy fats, fats. Our omega-3s, just quickly, are incredibly beneficial again because fatty acids, essential fatty acids that we can only get in our diets um, are help us transport hormones, but they also help us create hormones. So if we're not getting enough omegas, omega-3s and omega-6s, but most of us naturally have more omega-6s in our diet, omega-3s are more difficult to get hold of. Those are the things that come in like salmon, tuna, mackerel, herring, sort of fatty fish. Also come in things like chia seeds, uh, but plant-based plant omega-3s are not quite as effective as as uh, meat sourced omega 3 so if you do if you can in, introduce sort of fatty fish into your diet twice a week you'll be you'll be good to go um but again omega 3s are incredibly beneficial for our brain health our stress management our nervous system again a plethora of different benefits um but particularly through menopause they will help you manage your anxiety better and your skin health because of course collagen decreases and we all get a bit more wrinkly a bit more quickly which is a bit more depressing um so it's healthy eating it's healthy balanced eating if you've got any questions please do message me if you think this would be helpful and you know somebody who's struggling their way through either perimenopause or menopause, please do share this with them. And uh, if you've got any questions, obviously send me a message and I'll get straight back to you. So I hope that helped and catch you soon.